the is the article up yet? It's up. Okay, so quite astonishing. Imagine my shock when I saw on the New York Times website that they published an article about the killing of the, the industrial cell killing of surrendering Russian prisoners of war, right? Um, but also admit that this is that this is happening um, uh, at the hands of a, a quote unquote American led unit. So I think this is like a very rare example of a headline acknowledgement that there are foreign led units in Ukraine. I think that most people think of like foreign volunteers going to fight with the various different, the international, under the Ukrainian. Ukrainian. yeah, under the Ukrainian command. No, it's not true. Um, so yeah, but th this, th this is about the, uh, the, cho the chosen company, um, which is this much vaunted uh, paramilitary group comprised of foreigners. And like the article states, they have like a reputation for like really dangerous, like really casualty high uh, infantry assaults on Russian positions, which you know might account amount to suicide missions. I'm sure they're being paid a huge amount of money for it. Um, anyway, um, the point is, is they noted that um, a, 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 there are a, a number of cases recorded by a German medic posted in the unit that he saw like injured Russian soldiers pleading for medical attention from like um, advancing Ukrainian forces and they just killed them. And there are examples of them killing bound Russian prisoners of war. Um, this is all like a very, very, very serious war crime. And um, one former uh, chosen company fighter, uh, this uh, American from, from Massachusetts called Benjamin Reed said that he had heard to such a large degree innumerable conversations about the executions of POWs on various operations and he, he has claimed that the unit's recruiter openly told him it was okay to murder POWs if they didn't surrender in the strictest Geneva Convention standards which is total bullshit. Now I made this point on Twitter and it bears repeating. I think it really says something that um, the, 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 well, after the fall of France in 1940 there were a lot of British soldiers who were who were effectively stranded there because they couldn't get away during the Dunkirk rescue operation. And they were marched through France on foot by armed uh, Nazis. French civilians would leave buckets of drinking water out for them and the Nazis would kick them over. And this was seen as like the sign of like peerless sadism and cruelty. And fast forward to today, and there's an enormous number of people on Twitter who are justifying the ISIS tier torture and murder of incapacitated, injured, uh, non -fight, uh, uh, Russian prisoners of war who can't fight back, which is cold blooded murder. And, and yes, a very serious war crime. So that's where we've got to. Um, I'm sure that the next conflict, um, and because of course there'll be another one, uh, it'll be even more brutal because this precedent has been set. Uh, like the typical you know, laws of war don't seem to really apply. Um, at least not from Ukraine's perspective, but you have done some incredible work on the Georgian Legion, which is this basically a fascist paramilitary group comprised of Georgians, um, really like hardened killers uh, who um, uh, uh, they have openly posted like absolutely horrific videos of um uh, them like mer like just just shooting in cold blood um, like Russian prisoners of war and their chief. I had, I had to mute you. Well, yeah, uh, the the the, uh, the the unit, the Georgia National Legion, it's led by a guy named Mamuka Mamulishvili, who uh, has admitted in uh, on in an on camera interview that uh, they do not take Russian prisoners of war. They tie their hands and feet and they shoot them. Um, videos of the Georgian Legion carrying out executions of captive Russians uh, near Buch Buka. Um, I think it's like five miles out of Buka on the on the on the highway. Um, were posted on social media. This is covered by the New York Times uh, as well. Um, and there's a number of testimony. I um, I interviewed a, uh, a volunteer fighter for them who. Uh, admitted that uh, two people suspected, just suspected, there was no evidence, 
um, blew through a Russian checkpoint. They were accused of being Russian. I'm sorry, through a Ukrainian checkpoint, accused of being Russian spies and were uh, had, had black bags put over their head, taken to a basement and had their throats slit. Um, I also obtained audio testimony from another member of the Georgian Legion where they said that uh, a 19 year old uh, kid was accused of being a Russian spy. And so what they did was they cut his Achilles heel and forced him to swim across the Dnipro River while they took practice shots at him. So these are the kind of war crimes. And, and then, of course, as you and I have both uh, reported on, Mamuka himself was um, accused of being involved in the Maidan massacre, where I think it was 43 protesters and police officers were shot by snipers from the Hotel Ukraine yeah. uh, during the protests on the it Maidan like Square. It was, it was an enormous amount of people. Can you repeat that? I... Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, it was it was it was like it was more than a hundred people. I think. It, I mean, it was horrific. Um, that, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, and, and and now we have uh, the U.S. government uh, saying that um, Azov has passed Leahy vetting. Leahy vetting is the process where the U.S. government basically certifies that the groups that are getting training and weapons from them have not committed gross human rights violations like torture or extrajudicial killings. Uh, as of, of course, has a long history of doing those things. Uh, the third separate assault brigade, an offshoot of Azov, led by Andrei Beletsky, the uh, infamous neo-Nazi, um, has always been, since its inception, I think two years ago now, um, has been getting weapons and training, or at least wep uh, weapons from the United States and others, and training from uh, France. And uh, one thing that I reported uh, recently for active measures is that uh, while Third Assault Brigade members were receiving training by France, they were um, displaying, you know, neo-Nazi uh, emblems, SS stuff, uh, Totenkampf and uh, Galicia, the SS units, in particular, which are uh, very popular in the Ukrainian military. So we have this um, situation now where groups which are on camera committing war crimes, which would preclude them typically from receiving Western support, are getting Western support, and the U.S. government is saying that uh, that they've passed vetting. So it's, you know... So I think I think you're absolutely right, Kit, that the next war is going to be even worse. And um, I think that that next war is probably going to happen in Africa. I mean, which which is so, something that we we're, we're going to be reporting on more. Um, the uh, the coup belt, the three countries, Mali, I think it's Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger have uh, recently announced that they are banding together to form a uh, security alliance. Um, meanwhile, the U.S. is going to Botswana to try to drum up support um, for uh, their, for, for, you know, having more security partners because they're losing everyone in the region to uh, Russia and China. Now, if you look at the history of uh, warfare since the 90s in Africa, this is a history of uh, child uh, soldiers, yes. of torture, disappearances, extrajudicial killings, um, this is this is uh, I, I think you're hitting the nail on the head here by by saying that it's going to be worse. Yeah. But so if you could just draw up this this OSCE link and then go to page three. No, sorry, page six. Working on it. Thank you. Yeah. So I just just like, like make this point that what one of the most interesting sources of information about what what what's actually been happening in Donbass over the past eight years um, has been reports from the Operation for Security and Cooperation in Europe. And they had observers um, on the ground from day one. Uh, this included, the, 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 it's basically the US, U Europe and Russia. Um, I, I'm not sure if there are any other observer countries send observers to monitor the situation on the ground in conflicts. Um, they have, in some instances, been exploited for nefarious purposes, like in the war in Kosovo, where they were actually all CIA operatives who were scouting out places for NATO to bomb under the guise of, oh, we're just observers from this organization. Anyway, the point is, is a lot of these reports about what, what was happening in Donbass completely detonated what we were being told in the Western media by 
NATO, by the US, by Britain, and by Ukraine about what was happening, which is they were told they were told that they were fighting. We were told they were fighting this kind of like low key third world war and that the Russia had secretly invaded the country and lied about it. Um, the OSCE reports make clear that this is completely untrue. And what they were doing was carrying out this, at the Ukrainian forces were carrying out this absolutely brutal crackdown on the civilian population, kidnapping people, um, shooting at people from cars, uh, just, to, just to create this sense of permanent terror amongst the population. I think you know, in, in Mariupol, um, this was effectively ruled by Azov and right sector for many years, and they ruled it with an absolute iron fist. Um, so it, on, <clears throat> there is a there was a submission to the OSCE, which the OSCE published in 2016, based on interviews with hundreds of, of people from Donbass who had been taken prisoner by the SBU and by groups like Azov and right sector. Now, are you on page six? Yeah. Right. So are you, we just scroll down this very slowly, but I, I'll read it. So um, this is based on the first hand uh, witness accounts, but also often the physical appearances of people who spoke, who, um, who had been held in Ukrainian custody. Now, um, it states that there, it, it concludes pretty firmly that there is this like systematic and ever worsening level of brutality being deal, dealt out to, to um, often completely innocent civilians. Um, and so when in the custody of the SBU or right sector or Azov, um, prisoners were routinely electrocuted, beaten cruelly and for multiple days in a row with different objects, iron bars, baseball bats, sticks, rifle butts, bayonet knives, rubber batons. Um, techni other techniques included water boarding, strangling with a banderist garrote, and other types of strangling. Uh, rape was used. People were told that their, that their mother and that their sisters and that their girlfriends and wives would be raped unless they signed confessions stating that they were members of um, the breakaway rebel republics and that they were supportive of this, even if they weren't. Um, they were given uh, bizarre cocktails of drugs that made them intensely sick and were told that you're going to die unless you sign these papers and then we'll give you the antidote. Um, other, yeah, other torture methods used by the Ukrainian armed forces and, and security forces include bone crashing, stabbing and cutting with knives, branding with hot objects, which included like branding people with swastikas, I might add, shooting different body parts with small arms. Someone in the report talks about how they had their hands cuffed behind their back and a grenade with a pin pulled out of it was left in their hands. So like if they fell asleep. They would die. Like it's just, 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 just barbaric. Um, yeah, the prison prisoners taken captive by the Ukrainian armed forces are kept for days at freezing temperatures with no access to food or medical assistance. Um, an absolute majority of prisoners are put through mock firing squads and suffer death threats to their families. Many of these tortured are not members of the self defense forces of the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics. Okay, so yeah, the, this is like got zero media coverage whatsoever and this was the, the reality of like daily life for an enormous number of people living in Donbass. enormous now if you go on to the next link alex sorry i'd like to I'd, well because i've 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 reported on this document before yes. um it's from prior to the invasion yes. by russia um, but I don't know if our audience can see what I'm doing here, but I'm typing in Azov. And what we can see is 17 mentions in this document of Azov. Yeah. Uh, it was the it was the Azov battalion that arrested me. They beat me with rifle butts during the arrest. They questioned me using electroshock devices and beating me left and right. After that, I was taken to Mariupol SBU. Let's go to the next one. Uh Here's the kind of self-defense fighter Yuri Slusar, who was beaten with a saw chain and received uh, threats of violence to his wife and daughters, arrested by Azov. The torturers had Azov insignia on their sleeves. They threatened to rape uh, his family. Um, and it just goes on and on like this. If you go to the, I was going to say, if you go to the page, page look at the, the front cover of the report. And then go to page two, if you'd be so kind, Alex. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so 
we're on this is the the front cover of the report now this is like a really grisly photo of someone who looks like he, he's just been beaten to a literal pulp now you go down to the second page of this this report i'm working on it no, sir. If you go down to the second page of the report, the, the guy who was killed was a guy called Alex Ag Agafonov, who was tortured to death by SBU officers in November 2014. And his wife uh, said, um, the SBU have beaten him to death simply. When they came, they took him away to torture him. When they brought his body back, the heels were blue, the feet were blue. He's got some traces of punctures on his hands. I don't know what they did to him punctured him or drove the needles under his nails, there were holes on his hands. Each bone has a hole in it. They tortured him like when there was a real war, no one has tortured people the way they tortured him. Okay, so this was like routine and not r reported at all. There were several amnesty reports into like hor horrendous abuses committed by like tornado, which includes like raping children got zero media coverage whatsoever um so and it's like <clears throat> i think as well that i have this pet theory that it's been reported on in the um uh in the new york times that the guy who was whose name is his name escapes me now he was appointed the head of the sbu by the nationalist po immediate post-coup government right and so he recalls how he walked into SBU headquarters and it was basically empty. Yeah. And the first thing that he did was reach reach out to the CIA, the CIA and MI6, who, of course, both um, uh, were uh, throughout the war on terror, torturing people using many of the techniques which are described in here. Where do you think the newfangled made post made on SBU learned how to do this? Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you and I just I think might add as well that like that report it was submitted by an organization w which is based in Russia. So um, we can it, it sh there will no doubt be a chorus of people who suggest oh well this is Russian disinformation. The OSCE report. Oh okay. yeah yeah yeah. But if you just if you go to the next link down, Alex. Yeah. So this is a. No, 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 no. The, the uh, Bailey, UK immigration. No, it's all right. It just takes, it takes longer. Yeah, that's okay. No worries. So, um, yeah, there is a very, very interesting finding, which again received zero media coverage in June 2020. So this is st still while the UK is under lockdown. A UK immigration court ruled is up okay so if you go to down to country guidance it's it's just it's it's the second entry so this is a uk immigration court there are these two ukrainian draft dodgers who applied for asylum in the uk because they didn't want to serve in the ukrainian armed forces um and the uk court found in their favor on the grounds that military service in ukraine would by necessity entail committing war crimes. So in the, there is a section called country guidance, the conduct of the Ukrainian military in the conflict in the anti-terrorist operation zone. Uh, it states, elements of the Ukrainian military engage in the unlawful capture and detention of civilians with no legal or military justification. The, the, the reason that they were doing this was so they would have, they, they needed quote unquote currency for prisoner exchanges with the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics. Yeah. So uh, it states there is systemic mistreatment of those detained by the Ukrainian military in the conflict uh, in the east of the country. This involves torture and other conduct that is cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment contrary to Article 3 of the European Court of, of Human Rights. Um, even when it where such de de detainees are eventually transferred into the judicial detention process, there is likely to be official indifference to the mistreatment that they have received. There is an attitude of an, an atmosphere of impunity for those involved in mistreating detainees. No one has ever been brought to justice. Pro Kiev militia have been rewarded for their work, work for their work by formal incorporation into the military. Lawyers are afraid of taking of taking on cases of people who were kidnapped and tortured. Uh, by the SBU due to the risk of retribution. Um, it also states 
that um, the, the Ukrainian military and the paramilitary, the far right paramilitary groups that who were doing a lot of their fighting for them uh, would embed themselves in residential areas and civilian installations. This is a war crime. Uh, and uh, it also led to the widespread civilian loss of life and the extensive destruction of residential property. Uh, so uh, due, due to disproportionate attacks carried out by the Ukrainian military. So don't take our word for it. Don't take um, this Russia-based human rights organization's word for it. Um, take a Ukraine, UK immigration courts. This is a country that was heavily involved with the same fascist groups that found that, that, that Ukraine was doing this based on the evidence provided provided to the court. So, yeah, um, like pretty compelling. Hey, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.